welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Savannah and this channel is all about my knitting progress. Uh, sometimes I share spinning, but it's predominantly uh, knitting. Um, and this video is a special one. This one is a year in review for 2022. Um, I wrote down, oh, I wrote down everything, everything that I knit in 2022 and the days that I finished them um, and so that way I have a list that I can show you um, if not I'd have to go into my Ravelry <laughs> and do that I do set the challenge for myself every year of how many items I'm going to knit for that year so for 2022 it looks like I set my challenge which I can probably show you as 15 items because um, I'm never sure what the year is going to bring, um, considering the beginning of 2022 was definitely, definitely a hard one. Um, so I was unsure of what the year was going to bring, so I set 14, even though last, 15, sorry, I set 15 projects as my goal, even though last year I finished 35 items. So if you go into your Ravelry, if you use Ravelry and you go into your projects, projects up here in this top section, I don't know if it says challenge. If you click on that, you can set your goals. So right now it still just says 2022, so I can't set my 2023 goals yet. But it says I'd like to finish and I set 15 projects um, as my goal. I actually finished 36, which is 240%. <laughs> But it lists them all the way from, you know, the beginning to the, this is the most recent, and at the bottom is, the bottom is your, your first one of the year. I just want to check the dates, yes. And it shows you the date that you finished said project. Um, so yeah, I do that. I checked this <laughs> to get my list. <coughs> and then I had to go in, especially to the earlier ones, just to get the, um, the designer for some of them because I'll be honest not everything um, not every project that I knit I could remember the designer for but yeah this is my thing so I'm not entirely sure when 2023 will be available maybe not until the first of January so anyways off topic <laughs> I just wanted to show you that you can set a challenge for yourself um, I do every year and I always put on the lower end because you never know what you're going to run into during the year. So I have everything written down. And let me go ahead and give you the stats real quick before I start showing you all the projects that are sitting here. Okay, so in 2022, I knit 36 asterisk things. One of the projects in here that I will talk about um, it's actually three items, but I just lumped them as one because they were all the same and they were all a gift. So I just lit, lumped them together. So technically it would have been 38, but 36. We're going to keep it out of that. And out of those 36 items that I finished this year, I started 30 of them this year. That's crazy. That is crazy. So only six of them were started either last year or the year before, I guess. I'm not entirely sure. I did not track that information down, but yes. So I'm going to break it down by type of item. Oh, I did forget to grab one thing. Sorry. Um, okay. By item. So sweaters, that is my main thing that I like to knit. I knit 13 sweaters and that includes cardigans, pullovers, um, slipovers and I believe the one bralette that I made so that includes anything that you wear on this upper part of your body <laughs> um, I knit five hats nine socks four mittens or mitts um, four neck items that includes cowls or shawls and then one miscellaneous item that did not fit in any of those categories. So that is my breakdown for 2022. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you <laughs> every item. 
So this is probably going to be a very long video. You would already know. I will find out when I am finished. <laughs> All right. I am not going to give you the yarn details for every project because that I do not know. And um, I don't want to go ahead and take the time to research that. So I'm just going to show you the items, tell you who it is by, when I finished it. And if I know the yarn information, I will tell you. <laughs> All right, first item, it's in the middle of the pile. This is gonna be a hot, hot mess. First item is the peach tea. This was a test knit that I finished January 7th. The design is called peach tea and it's by Megan Gonzalez. Um, it has these, um, this pretty little cable cross design across the yoke. This is a rounded yoke sweater, crop top, short sleeve, very crop top. Um, I don't wear this, I don't love it. You hold the yarn double throughout the whole thing, that's how you can marl in the middle, right there. Um, so technically it's like a D weight, DK weight um, sweater, but I do not like this a huge boat neck. That is not my style. They're beautiful. I just feel very uncomfortable wearing them. And it's also very cropped. And for some reason, the fabric just feels really thick to me. I mean, yes, it's held double, but for some reason it just, I am uncomfortable in it. So I don't, I don't ever wear it. Um, what was this? The yarn, this top yarn was dyed by me. I dyed this, and then the bottom yarn is Andromeda Sock Yarn in the Bloomin' Bloomers colorway. So I thought they went okay together, so I held them together for this test knit. Um, I don't think it's terrible, but definitely not for me. So I think this one might end up on my Etsy at some point if you are interested. Everything is linked down below. You'll find all the links to these patterns in the description below as well as all my social medias including my Etsy so if there's anything that I mentioned that might go into my Etsy you might want to follow me over there just in case uh, okay number two is I have them labeled as Libby's mitt or Liv's mitts so I made my daughter some mitts with the leftover yarn from the sweater that I'm actually wearing right now, which is the Ingles sweater by Caitlin Hunter. This yarn is Wolf Folk, oh, Blue Sky Fibers Wolf Folk Worsted. I love this yarn, it's super cozy. Um, but this was the leftovers, and so I made my daughter some mitts using it. Um, and I finished these January 8th. The pattern is the World's Simplest Mittens by Tin Can Knits. Uh, that's a free pattern, I believe, and it's baby all the way up to adult, and you can use fingering all the way up to bulky weight. So it's a pretty, I think it's a free pattern. I could be wrong there, but it is a very good pattern because it'll fit any hand, any yarn you have. So, yep, um, Liv Smiths, I don't know what else to tell you about this. Okay. Next one I don't have. It's actually back in this corner over here in under the stairs in a bin buried all the way in the back unfortunately. So I'll have to insert a photo but it's called the Saft and Cushy Hat by Pearl Soho. I made this or I finished it January 16th. I used some hand spun that I spun myself. Um, the hat doesn't fit. It's too big. My hand spun was very uneven when I spun it because I was still in the beginning of my hand spinning journey so it's not the best spin that I've done but I did make the hat it's all over rib hat I believe um with a folded brim but yeah it's just in the I have a box that we put our winter coats and stuff in every year um and I just never got that hat out so so that one was in there next one Number four, Liv's Amelia hat. This hat is by Joan Ho. Um, I finished this one January 18th. This is a very fast knit. 
Um, you use some faux fur for the interior and then a worsted weight on the outside. I believe all this yarn came from Hobby Lobby. Um, and it's this beautiful little bomber hat with the ear flaps. I never added the I-cord strap so you could tie that up because my kids just wear it down anyways. Um, oh, my hair is up, but Liv's fits me. <laughs> it's super warm and cozy. Only issue I have with this is I can't hear <laughs> when I wear this hat. So that's why I never made myself one. But I made one for Liv. And then two days later, I finished Troy's version with, look, his mittens. <laughs> I'd made these ones last year. His mittens are in there. Um, I finished this on January 20th. So these are, again, very quick knits. Um, he wanted gray. Actually, I bought the gray for myself. He never picked uh, colors, but then after we got home and I made Olivia's, he decided he wanted one too, so <laughs> I just used my yarn. Again, I can't hear with these hats on, so it doesn't matter. Um, and they love them. They keep their heads really warm with this faux fur yarn. And then the worst of weight on the outside. It's so quick and easy to make. Um, yeah, and he put a little pin on his, <laughs> so... He has that funness. Um, yeah. So I made these. That was four and five. The Amelia Hat by Joan Ho. Number six is the Traveler Pullover by Tiff Nealon. I believe that I test knit this one. I had had the original pattern and the yarn for it, I just never knit it. And then she revamped the pattern and then asked for people to test knit it. And I signed up for that because I already had all the stuff and she was looking for somebody who already had the pattern. And so that's what I did. I finished this February 3rd. Um, is this the, okay, this is the front. So this is the Traveler Pullover. We have a fisherman's rib, um, neckline and cuffs and then a twisted rib split hem with an I-cord edge. This is really lightweight. Um, I do like it. It is wide in the neck as well, but I do like it. It is cozy. The yarn that I use, so I dyed all this yarn myself. I believe this is a sport weight. Um, it's really uh, light and airy and it's definitely different, but I believe it is a sport weight sweater. So yeah, something I made <laughs> earlier this year. Okay, next one, the pulse warmers. Where are you? I wear these every single day. These are the pulse warmers. They're by Ball and Skein. They are a free pattern. They're very quick to knit up. You have a knit and purl texture. Um, I used 50% cashmere. Oh, I forgot what else was in it. These have half, it's half cashmere in my, in my pair. They are nice. They are on the little, on the wider side. Cause I think this was a sport weight yarn. And I think the pattern calls for a fingering weight, but I could be wrong. Either way, I wear mine every single day. It, they stay nice and tucked into my jacket and up on my hands, and then I just tuck my hands into my pocket and they stay extra warm. Um, they're great for driving and holding a cold steering wheel. Um, they're, they're nice, I love these. So I made these and finished these February 7th. These are a quick knit, so. And I did actually add an extra repeat just to make them a little bit longer on mine. So, yep. Probably could use a really good wash. Alright, next I finished the Underwing Mitts, um, February 8th. These are by Erica Hauser. Let me take my ring off because that is going to get caught on these. These are the Underwing Mitts. They are a full color work fingerless mitt with a thumb gusset. I knit these using Holst Super Soft. Um, they're a little tight right here. They're only one size though. And then you just duplicate stitch um, the orange on when you're finished. 
But yeah, I made these. These are beautiful. They, um, I don't wear them as much just because a lot more of my hand is exposed. But I think they are gorgeous. I love these. Yep, underwing mitts. I don't think these took very long for me to knit up. And I think they knit on a US one too. I could be wrong. But they're a little tight, so... If you're a tight color... <laughs> I'm a tight color work knitter, which kind of is unfortunate. So if you are as well, go up a needle size. Next is my Curio Socks. These by Andrea Mowry. I finished these March 3rd. I used my hand knit, or sorry, this is my hand spun yarn. And these are from the same ball. That's how much it transitioned. Um, I love these socks, but unfortunately, because they were hand spun yarn, I put a hole in them. I repaired them, wore them one time, and then the second one got a hole. So I do need to repair these ones as well and give them a bath. Um, I, I should knit another pair of these in like non hand spun yarn just so that they last a little bit longer, but I do love these. These are beautiful socks. So yeah, these were, it was fun though to knit with my hand spun. Like I did a really good job. That was a beautiful colorway. Uh, next is my, so these are my first pair of uh, socks that I cranked on my, what is it called? My Dean and Bean sock machine. It's a, it's a CSM or a, a cranking sock machine is that what that stands for I finished these March 18th because I had just received my machine in March um, so this was my first pair that I did and look at that this is from the exact same ball of yarn but look what happened isn't that crazy so this was sock number one and this is sock number two and so yeah my first set of CSM socks Next was my Sev, I believe that's how that's pronounced. It is a sweater by Isabel Kramer. Sorry, I'm just trying to find it in the pile. Isabel Kramer, I know I started this, I believe this is one that I started in 2021 and then put it off for a really long time. Uh, where is it, Sev, Sev um, by Isabel Kramer. I finished this March 19th and I opted to keep it sleeveless. So it has this cable cross pattern, which is super easy. There's instructions to do it without a cable needle. And then there's a single row that goes down the back, but actually this is reversible. So you could wear this in the front or this in the front. This is typically how I wear it with that in the front. And then again, I told, I said, I left the, the sweater sleeveless because I did like the way it looked. Um, kind of has a slip over. So I knit this using, it was yarn from Joann's. It was an acrylic yarn. I think it was called Touch of, Alpaca. Oh, Touch of Alpaca. So it's a mostly acrylic yarn. I think that's what threw me off for a while was, I, I don't love knitting with acrylic yarn for garments only because I know blocking isn't going to do much of anything for the garment. So this didn't grow at all or anything like that. So I try to avoid acrylic for garments. I'm okay with using it for like hats and stuff like that. That's not a big deal. But when it comes to clothing, I prefer not to. So I don't wear this one very often, but I do like it. Again, it's Sev, S-E-V-E -E by Isabel Kramer. Um, moo, nope, elves slippers. I, these are by, I think it's Casa Fredrickson. I don't know how to pronounce it. This pattern came out of the 52 Weeks of Socks book by Lina. Um, these are my absolute favorite th things. Like, I wore the crap out of them to the point that they got a hole in one, one side. And then this one I just noticed is very thin and it's going to pop a hole if I wear it. So I have not worn these in a while. I did buy more yarn to make another pair of these. Um, as you can see, um, 
I held the opposite yarn in because it's all world or color work. I do the double handed color work technique. So you're supposed to whichever one is in. I forget it. I think the one in your dominant hand becomes the prominent color. And I think I accidentally forgot which one I held, you know, in my right hand when doing the socks. So <laughs> one looks more yellow, one looks more blue. I do do love these. Um, I believe you can get the pattern on Ravelry now, so I'll link it, but it is from the 52 Weeks of Socks. And they're very quick to knit. The first one took a while just because I wasn't sure what the heck I was doing, and then the second one took me like three days. It was so warm. I wore the crap out of them. Like, I wear them outside barefoot as well, not barefoot, but with just these and no shoes, and I was like, I think that's what caused the hole, um, which I'm a little sad, but... It's okay, and I don't really want to fix it because it is color work, um, and I'm just lazy like that. Uh, but this was Rauma in the DK weight, which I forget is called, what it's called. It's like three something, but this is the DK weight Rauma, and it's a rustic yarn, but it's absolutely so nice on my feet. I actually really this is. I think one of the first things that started me into liking rustic yarns um, were these. Did I say when I finished these? April 15th. So I didn't get them to wear them for too long. It was several months, but not... Definitely haven't been able to wear them the last couple months. Um, next. Moon Moth. Where are you? Moon Moth is designed by Natalie Meredith. I finished this April 28th, and it is my very first bottom-up sweater. It's a bottom-up raglan. It was definitely difficult to attach the sleeves because you don't get to here and then add this, you know, add the sleeves in. It's you knit the whole thing up to before the collar, and then you knit the sleeves separately. Like you knit this in the round all the way up to here and then the rest of it's flat. Same with that side and then you actually sew the raglan together and then add the collar last. Uh, so this was definitely a new experience. Um, it is too small for me which I am very un sad about. This is also using Woolstock Worsted, which is the same yarn as this, just in these beautiful colorways. Um, I really love the moth. That is why I decided to knit this. Um, but this sweater does mean some to me, just because I purchased the yarn in my hometown. Um, I can't remember if I purchased the yarn the first time I visited when my mother was diagnosed with cancer or the week that she passed away. I cannot remember. I'll be honest, I think it was the week she passed away and I started this. I bought the yarn specifically for this pattern, so, and I believe I started it that week that she passed. So, this one means something to me, even if it can't fit me. My daughter has worn it as an oversized sweatshirt, which is absolutely adorable to her, on her, so this one will stay with me forever. It's beautiful though. Look at that color work. Oh, I love it. If only it was top down. That'd be so nice. And then on the sleeves you have a new moon and a full moon. So there is flat work, flat color work in this as well. So that was, bottom up was new, flat color work was new, <laughs> seaming the raglans. Yeah, it was definitely all new for me. This one, again, is called Moon Moth by Natalie Meredith. Um, all right, the Sitka Spruce Cowl. I finished this May 3rd, and it's by Jamie Lomax. I believe this is one I started in 2021 as well, and then I just got sick of knitting it. I hate bobbles, and there's miniature bobbles in here. So, and this, all right, this cowl is knit in the round and then you you know you uh kitchener stitch it together at the end um, it has this beautiful seed stitch pattern 
in the middle with some Latvian braids. Um, and it's, um, obviously it's a, a spruce with pine cones. Again, the miniature baubles. I really wish I hadn't chosen to do that. <laughs> well, I haven't worn this at all this year. I need to wear it once school starts back up. But, um, I hate baubles. I'm going to not do them for the rest of my life if possible. <laughs> They're not my friend. And there's a crap ton of them. I know you can't see them, but there is a crap ton in throughout this design, not only on the outsides. They're all up in here too, which I think ruins my design because I'm not very good at doing baubles. This is DK weight. Um, I dyed all this yarn for this project. Um, I know this pattern does have an option to do it in fingering weight as well, but yep. I chose DK. It's pretty though. So yep. Yeah. Okay. What's next? The Skylights. I finished this May 7th and this one's by Tannis Lavelli of Tannis Fiber Arts. Um, this one has baubles too, but honestly it wasn't so bad because it's a bulky weight sweater so it was easier. Plus the technique to make them were different. Um, so this is the Skylight sweater. Again, a bulky weight yarn. Um, I think I knit this in seven days, six days. I can't remember. It was very quick. I started it just a few days before I finished it in May. Um, there's that beautiful cable detail down the front. You got yarn overs for your raglan. Um, the only thing I noticed, the other day I went to go wear this. And I don't know why it didn't bother me before, but um, I think I'm going to rip back the sleeve a little bit and just lengthen them just a little bit more. Like, this one's a little bit on the short side for me as well, but <coughs> it doesn't bother me as much because I do like pulling the sleeves up on this sweater. I think I need to uh, just lengthen these sleeves just a, a bit more. Put this much more on. Probably put just as much as this and then do the cuff. And I have extra of this yarn left over. I actually have three skeins left. I hand dyed this yarn myself. It's just a one of a kind for this sweater. So, but yes, if you want a nice sweater and bulky weight, a quick knit with some detail, I do recommend this one. It's a nice one. Skylight by Tannis Lavelli. <coughs> I need some water. All right, next is the DK Sugar Boo Bralette. I finished this one May 17th. This one was a quick knit too, but that's just because it's a bralette. This is designed by Kadri. So I decided to make this for, I don't even know what reason. Oh, because I probably, I had the yarn. This was an, actually an acrylic yarn from Hobby Lobby. Um, it says it was a DK weight yarn, but it definitely feels more like a sport weight. I want to say I held it double for this, but I can't remember for sure, nor can I tell. I could have sworn I held this double. And so I had this yarn and I was like, well, let's just make something with it real quick since I have this and let's try a bralette because a lot of people were making bralettes at that time. A lot of people. So I was like, well, I'm going to make it too. Um, it is a little big. Um, I don't like the lack of support, so I will never wear it as a bralette, nor will I wear it as just a thing under, um, like a cardigan. It's too cropped for me, but if you watched my whip parade, I wore it over a button-down blouse, and I really <laughs> loved it, so I'm going to be making some more of these or a different styles of bralettes and uh, be pairing them over button downs because that is fun. And I didn't even think about that option. Honestly, it reminds me of Cher from Clueless. So <laughs> I definitely love it. Again, this one's by Kadri. It's the DK version because um, I believe she has a worsted version as well. It's the Sugar Boo, Bra Sugar Boo Bralette. I know she has lots of other versions as well, or different types of bralettes and camisole patterns as well. Next is the Nello House Socks. I finished these June 8th. 
took me four days to knit these guys and these are by Tiff Nealon. Um, they are definitely worn in. I like these socks. Um, I made these for, for my make nine this year because I had the yarn and I had the pattern in stash for quite some time. So they needed to get done. So I should have probably brought my sock blockers, but I don't know. These have recently been washed. And so they're a bit, I just throw them in the wash in a garment bag. All my hand knit socks get thrown into a garment bag and they get washed and then hung up to dry. So they are a little worse for wear, but that's okay. And there's a little tassel on each of them. So that's fun. And my poor tassel probably shouldn't go in the wash machine, but, uh, oh, well, there is a pattern on the top of the foot, like a garter and lace bit, but you can't tell with this yarn. This yarn is from the lemonade shop. It's called self care. And I just put these two together. You actually hold the yarn double after the cuff. So the cuff is a herringbone design. And then you hold the yarn double throughout. So it uses the whole 100 gram skein, which is great. I absolutely like these a lot. And I'm amazed that they knit up so fast. So yeah, that was one of my make nines for the year. Which I'll show you that probably after I'm done. Alright, next, number 18 is Frog by Claire Garland. I finished this, I believe it took me one day to knit this, maybe two days. Finished it on June 16th. And that is the little frog that has, you know, just grabbed everybody this summer. I knit this using Jameson and Smith. That was my first time using that yarn. I love it. I wish that I could afford a whole sweater's quantity worth. Um, the stuff is nice. So Jameson and Smith. I think I could be wrong. It could be the, oh gosh, I don't remember. Check my Ravelry page. My frog is wonky. I'm not very good at lining up the edges to sew. So his little eyes are a little crooked, but he's so cute anyways. Um, I do want to make more. It's just definitely those little toes and the arms are so fiddly. Isn't he adorable? Oh, my little frog. So he sits on my desk and watches me work. And when I'm sitting there eating lunch or whatever, he hangs out with me. So that's my one miscellaneous on my list. Frog by Claire uh, Garland. Okay. Number 19 is JJ's Sunny Broom Hat. This is the only crochet thing that I did this year. I finished it on June 21st and it's... I can't remember what the designer goes by, like name-wise, her company name, but her name on Ravelry is Dina Zato. Um, and it is this hat. This hat ended up being a little too big for me, but um, it was fun to knit. I knit this using a cotton yarn. I think it's, I forgot what it was called. It's a cotton yarn by Lion Brand. And then you use this wire. There's a wire that you can get to keep it up like that. So I do have extra cotton that I was thinking about making like a white one with some rainbow stripes here. Um, but I think I'm going to go a size down. <laughs> so it's not too big. It is, it's big like in this area. I feel like it should be just a little bit tighter, but not cute. I know she has bulky white ones too for the winter, like a beanie style, but it has the brim as well. Um, she has a lot of different, I think, options for this hat. But yeah, and I have extra wire too, so. My husband picked me up wire from like Home Depot, I think. So there's that. Um, the Cardi V-neck by Ann Vensel. I finished this June 27th. Oh, goodness. This one was a lot of fun to knit. Um, I did have to do a lot of extra work. Um, I accidentally knit this side, this front V-neck side, all the way down to here on accident. I misread the pattern. Um, so, yeah, this is two strands of Holst Super... No, it's one strand of Holst Super Soft and two strands of uh, mohair held all held together in this 
cable cross pattern, which seems to be her signature pattern right now. A lot of her designs are coming out with this uh, design on it. So it's pretty easy. You don't need a cable. You're just crossing two stitches every four rows. I think that's what it was, every four rows. So it's a lovely piece. So yes, lots of mohair went into this. Lots of holes, super soft. It's oversized. It's lovely, cozy. I mean, it could be longer, honestly. It could be. The sleeves could be just a hair longer. It's just when I get to the bottom of things, to the end of things, I get a little uh, antsy to get it finished. So yeah, this is again the Cardi V-neck. Why it's called that? No clue. It's not a cardigan. <laughs> it's a V-neck, but it's not a cardigan. Um, next was Straya by Andrea Mowry. I finished this July eighth. This ooh, was a pain. I hated knitting this. I hated it. Every second of it, <laughs> I hated. This is the Straya by Andrea Mowry. It is a half fisherman's rib sweater on a US 2 with fingering weight. <laughs> so it took forever, forever. Um, I used, um, was this ampersand fibers? And this was all, well, not all of it, but a majority of it was gifted because I won a giveaway from ampersand fibers. So I just had to buy two skeins extra, I believe, to finish this, you know, to have enough yarn for this sweater. Plus I have a crap ton left. I have plans to make uh, socks with the yellow and the white together. These two colors. But yeah. This is the Straya. It is a little small on me. I did not do the decreases. I think I only did four of the decreases on the sleeve. Because I thought it was going to be too tight. But then the sleeves don't stay up when I pull them up. So that was kind of a like oops. Nor are the sleeves like long enough for me. Again, I was ready to be over with. But um, I don't hate it. It's just, it's not perfect for me. Uh, but it is what it is. So, <laughs> Straya by Andrea Maori. Hated knitting on it. <laughs> Next was my Sock Week Socks. Sock Week Socks. So technically it was only one sock because I had I had one sock finished in 2021. It was a test knit that I did. These are called Let Me See You Lotus Socks. So there's like a little lotus flower design. And I used um, some yarn that I dyed when I first started dyeing yarn. I did the test knit, which was required one sock. One sock for the test knit. And then I never started the second sock. Cause I was like, oh, that's a lot of work, a lot of thing, or a lot of color work. Um, so I never did it. But then when the sock week came up in this year with uh, Nitty Natty, I decided to sock week. You only need to do one sock. So I was like, well, let's finish up these. So I did. I did the second sock this year. So I finally got the pair finished on July sixteenth. So I finally got those done. They're a little tight because they're color work. I really need to work on picking a larger size needle when it comes to the color work just because I, I I knit my color work tight. It's it's just what it is. It's, unfortunately, no matter how hard I try. All right, next is the Ramble Shawl. This is also by Andrea Mowry. I finished this July 16th. This one took a while. I prob I don't know when I started it, but I have a feeling it could have been 2021. This is what it looks like. It's a DK weight um, shawl. Uh, you start with the stripes, and that's super easy to get to. And then once I got to the brioche section, um, I was not in the right headspace to knit this type of brioche with all the increases and decreases. I think that's what it was. Um, so I put it away for quite some time and then it started to bother me. So I, when I did pick it back up, I was thankfully in the right headspace and was able to get all that brioche done. I don't know if I, I think I actually didn't do all the brioche. I think I shortened it just a little bit, but, um, 
yeah so yep yeah. it's quite long on the striped side so I have a little knot in there it's a nice shawl again DK weight I dyed the gray myself and then the white is just an undyed uh bare skein so yep yeah. just a lovely little shawl that one's done next is the this is number 24 it is the floral rainbow cardi this one i designed myself i dyed the yarn myself for this one um but trying to write the pattern was absolutely so challenging that i decided that it just wasn't going to go out into the world so this is the floral rainbow cardi so it's a drop shoulder v-neck cardigan um, with my my main thing that I wanted was this ruffle button band, which turned out perfect. And I put ruffles on the cuffs as well. I do wish the cuffs were cinched in a little bit more. Um, I did not do enough decreases there, but that's okay. This is all DK weight. Um, and I picked these little flower buttons for my sweater. I saw this, I saw a sweater similar to this on a, an ad on my Facebook a long time ago. It was for some kind of um, kawaii website that sold a lot of very colorful oversized items for smaller ladies. Um, so the sweater was probably not oversized for me because they only sold one size on the website. But it looked just like this with the um, pink band and then the rainbow colors. So that's where that idea came from. And then, I mean, I really like drop shoulder stuff. So I, I've worn the crap out of this. The, the yarn is definitely pilling. It's a 100% um, superwash merino, I believe. Um, definitely is showing a lot of wear because I wore this a lot in the summer after I finished it. But yeah, um... Trying to figure out how long I wanted each colored section was definitely difficult. Um, when I first started, this purple section, I thought I wanted it a certain length, but then when I did the math, the cardigan would have probably been down to my knees, and I didn't want it that oversized. Right now it comes just to the um, upper thigh area. Here's my hip, so it comes down quite far already I did not need it any longer than that so that took some time to figure out um designing is is definitely not easy well knitting the item is easy writing a pattern no <laughs> trying to figure out sizes and stuff I don't understand how people can do it and I tried for the life of me to find anything I could for resources online it just didn't click so it's a one of a kind I'm thinking maybe I'll put it on for free, but only one size. I know that's not the best option, but maybe at some point I will. Up, uh, I did start writing the pattern. I just couldn't fill in like numbers and stuff like that. So I think maybe I'll just go in and tweak that. So it's just my size, which this is a large plus um, a lot of ease. So it should fit. A good amount of people but I at least have it for free on Ravelry in case anybody is interested but yeah I finished that August uh, 16th I don't remember how long that took me to knit probably a week or two I don't know I was really into it the next one that I finished number 25 is the rocket tee by Tannis Lavelli um, I finished this August 31st um, I used, I had this cake by Monsoon Calamity. It's a four-stranded cotton um, yarn that she used to make. Um, she no longer sells it, but I had this beautiful gradient and I wasn't sure what I was going to make with it. So I decided to make the, whoa, it's wrinkly, the rocket tee, which is technically supposed to be a striped with mohair, um, but I used this instead. <laughs> Because the gradient kind of stripes on its own, except for down here, it it 
fades so well that you can't even see the difference. So, yep, and then you got an I-cord um, neckband, a sleeve, uh, sleeve hems, and hem. It's all I-cord. You have a lace bit on the sides. I do have a few mistakes <laughs> in my lace. Same with the reglan increases. I have a mistake right there, unfortunately. Um, I do not wear this. I have not worn this since I finished it. I think it's because it's a little too short on me. Um, yeah, my belly button's right there. That's a little too short for me. So I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this one yet if I'm going to sell it. It does have mistakes in it, but I am only human. So, you know, you, you buy a handmade item, it might have mistakes in it. I am not a machine. So that is something that might go into my Etsy store at some point. Just have to make the decision to take the photos <laughs> and put it on my website. All right, next 26 is the Miles shirt jacket. I finished this September 9th and it is by Ozetta. This is my most favorite knit. I wear this very uh, often. Um, this is exactly what it is, a shirt jacket. It is an oversized uh, button down drop. Oh, I don't know, is that drop shoulder? Cart like cardigan, but it's a shirt jacket, fold over collar. Um, I knit this in Plautilope, two strands held together. Um, I got some beautiful buttons on there. There's no pot. I did not put pockets on mine. I kind of wish that I did. Um, but the pockets are, according to where I'm supposed to put them, they'd be really high. So I need to figure out what I'm going to do there. But I wear this all the time. It is so warm. It is so nice. And... It is softening up with every wear. Oh, I love this thing. Love it. I want to, I think I want to make another one in, I don't know if I'll do it in gray or brown or, or what. And it has a, it does a high, low, high thing right here, which is fun. I think I messed up on mine because I was like short five stitches. So I think I did my short rows wrong. Or just was distracted and did my short rows a little wrong because it's I think it's on this side because it's shaped a little funny. Let's see if I can. You see how it like comes down and then goes straight across. It was supposed to be more <laughs> rounded. Um, I think I made a mistake there with my short rows. I know you can't see it very well, but I do wear it all the time. All the time. And again, it's a folded over. Uh, um, neckband and then you just seam the sides closed so that there's no hole in there. It has this beautiful shoulder seam. And again, this is by Ozetta. And I knit mine in Platilope. It is the best thing to have. If you live in a colder climate or you just get cold, make yourself one of these. Okay. After that, I have a whole pile. After that, I finished the Elf and Glow by Andrea Mowry. This is the Rhinebeck sweater of this year. I knit mine and finished it September 24th. Yes. This is mine. I dyed the blue and the gray and the, and the purple. That was from a different sweater last year, but the purple mohair. I dyed the blue and the gray. That's all sport weight. And then I have Spin Cycle. As that it is short it is a little too short I prefer to wear this with a like a high-waisted skirt so I don't wear it very often um, and it is is tight I mean it's supposed to be I think very close ease to you know like zero ease to like one or two inch positive ease um, this one isn't terrible for a rounded yoke but yeah I finished this one this year. Uh, tube socks. These are my tube socks. These ones need to be washed. I apologize. 
tube socks. So I took my CSM machine, my Dean and Bean sock machine, and I knit, cranked this all this as a tube. And then I went ahead and tried, or I split and put in afterthought heels, toes, and cuffs. Just to see how that went. It did take me some time to make these. Um, like I had done the tube and then I just kind of slacked on doing the heels, toes, and cuffs just because I was lazy. These are really, really soft though. The yarn, the striped yarn was gifted to me from my friend Jen of Spectacular Yarns. Um, she made a pair of socks for herself using this yarn and used a contrasting color similar to this. And I loved it so much that I had to copy her. <laughs> um, these are like really, really soft. Like I'm like, why are they so soft? They do need to be washed though. So yeah, I think it was strings and things who dyed this yarn, but I could be wrong. I'm not sure, but it's very beautiful. So yes, I just wanted to see how it worked out if you crank a tube and then try to add in heels, toes, and cuffs. After that was the Attune Shawl. I finished this October 2nd. This is by Andrea Mowry, and I hand spun all the yarn for this. Yep, I hand spun all this yarn for the Attune Shawl. I made the smaller size because I was worried that I didn't have enough yarn. But I have the extra yarn sitting over there and I think I have enough that I could have made at least this part bigger. But it's okay. Um, it's really lovely the, the extra um, yarn. I plan to make the Harlow hat by Andrea Mowry this coming year. So I'll have a matching hat to go with this. This is actually the front, sorry. <laughs> this is the front. So you have half brioche, half fisherman's rib, and then um, it's a garter at the bottom, but it's not your typical garter. You are still sliding back um, to do your stripes, which is definitely different. And it was kind of annoying that it wasn't just, oh, it was like you knit one row and then you're gonna purl one row and then you're gonna purl one row and then you're gonna knit it was really annoying. I just wanted straight knits. No more pearls. <laughs> so that sucked. But uh, it was how she designed it to get it to fade the uh, every other. Every other uh, section is the opposite color. So the main color, the contrast color, main color, contrast color. So it's a little bit different than typical garter stripes. So yeah. Um, what was next? The Twists and Turns Mystery Knit Along by Stephen West. I finished this November 2nd, so I stayed um, caught up the entire time this Mystery Knit Along happened. Uh, I was able to finish it in time. Did you add the pom-poms as an after afterthought uh, later on? But not too much later. And I only did two of these I-cord embellishments on the cables on each side because I did not want to knit that many I-cords because... I was I corded out when it came to this shawl, but I do love this shawl. I dyed all the yarn to uh, for this shawl, and I used all singles. I used a single uh, single space. Um, that was my first time dyeing a single space. I didn't like dyeing it. It didn't. I don't feel like it took the color as evenly as I had hoped for. But you know what? It's okay now. That's all knit up. You can't really tell that it's a lot of variegation um, but I, I do like this shawl I was really worried because I am not a mystery knitter I don't like knitting mystery things um but this didn't turn out terrible I like it it's so soft too so yeah fun times after that, I did... Oh, I forgot those socks. One sec. Okay, um, next I decided to crank another pair of socks on my machine. I just grabbed some yarn out of my stash that was really old that I've had for a while and decided that it needed to just get out of my stash. So these are... I'm calling them my Chemnit socks. They were her 2021... January 2021 color... Uh, I forget what she calls it. She likes to do um, like a challenge, I guess. I, I wish I could remember the exact wording. She picks a photo from online and then she challenges everyone else along with herself. Does a live 
to dye a colorway based off of that photo. And so this was what she came up with for a photo of a um, very close up sparkler. So it was a dark blue background with um, blurry pinks and yellows, you know, because it was a sparkler. It was on fire. <coughs> My throat is starting to kill me. So um, I bought the yarn from her Etsy because I thought it was absolutely beautiful and I had the yarn in my stash for quite some time and so I was like I need to just knit it up and so I decided to use my machine to just crank them up quickly because it takes me about a day or two. Um, it could take me a day to make a pair of socks but sometimes I just get tired <laughs> so I'll crank one and then I'll crank the next one the next day. But yeah, a beautiful colorway. I like how both of them turned out the same this time. <laughs> so yeah. These are my chem knits. Chem knit socks. I finished those November 12th. Sorry. My Friday slipover was my next project that I finished. I finished that November 19th. This is by Petite Knits. And it is a beautiful broken ribbed slipover. V-neck slipover. This is the V-neck version, sorry. The Friday slipover V-neck version. I believe she has a crew neck version as well. Um, so I knit this and I want more slipovers. So I'm really enjoying the layering of this. So, yep, it's an all over broken rib, which felt like it took forever. Um, but I think it only took me 17 days. Sometimes things feel like they take a million years. And then when you, the way I track it, I track what I knit every single day. And then I total it all up when I am finished. And it's a shock to see how long it really actually took me to knit something. And I'm not counting days that I didn't knit. It's just the days that I did knit. So active knitting days. And that whether that's 30 minutes that I knit on it one day or several hours, it doesn't matter. It's just what day I, I knit on it. So um, I used Hulse Super Soft and then a strand of... Um, drops kid silk I knew I wanted a pink slipover um, so yeah I I like it it again it's a little big to be honest I did go up a size for once because I was tired of all the small things that I was knitting and they're not fitting so I went up one size um, it's a little big but you know what it's it fits and it still looks okay so I need to learn to start knitting bigger <laughs> Um, next, I don't have a picture, or I mean, I have to insert a picture because I do not have the items. They are the pulse warmers, like I showed earlier, by Ball and Skein. I knit three pairs, but I'm only counting them as one. Um, I knit three pairs for my co workers as gifts um, for Christmas. Um, I finished those on November 22nd, and I think I gifted them at the very beginning of December. And I used 100% alpaca yarn from Chile that one of my co-workers actually gifted me earlier in the year. So I just turned those, that yarn into lovely gifts and returned it. They're super nice. They're tighter than mine. And they're super soft because they're 100% alpaca. So they're really nice. Um, Next is my Bear Paw Socks by Andrea Maori. I finished those November 29th. I did this for her. It was one of her knit-alongs. It was a... A challenge to just knit a pair of socks over the Thanksgiving weekend and I managed so the bear paw socks um, you hold two strands of yarn throughout so they're DK weight um, with the flegal heel which is super easy I really like that heel um, they are a touch too long so that's good to know for the future when I knit more <laughs> um, and the yarn is all from Explorer Knits and Fiber um, it's our her Acadia National Park and Linen Colorway. Yep. Another pair of socks. And I liked these socks so much that I made another pair. But these ones are actually the Thanksgiving socks by um, Summerly Design. I finished these de December 12th. And it's technically the same except it's top down instead of toe up. Um... You don't put the, it's a heel flap and gusset instead of a flegal heel and you don't put the ribbing on the bottom. I decided to try putting fluff. Uh, this is Surrey Alpaca held together with a 
It's a cereal packet held together with a fingering weight, and then you hold the fingering weight double um, for the rest of the sock, and then I added more fluff at the bottom for the toes. Um, these need to be washed as well because I've been wearing the crap out of them. Um, what do I want to say? Yarn is uh, Andrea Mar- No. No. It is Andromeda Sock Yarns Bloom and Bloomer. So this was extra yarn left over from this. Um, so it's really nice. I do love the fluffiness, but as you can see, I don't feel like the- I don't know why the ribbing isn't cinching back in. Is it because of the Surrey Alpaca? Like, even before I wore these, I put these on my sock blockers, and the this part stayed stretched out. So I don't know if it's because of the Surrey Alpaca. But putting the fluff in there is really, really nice. Really, really nice. Nice and toasty. So I'm really enjoying these thick socks that where you hold two strands of yarn double. It actually uses a lot more yarn, so you're not, you don't have as much left over. Um, what else can I say? Uh, yeah, I have other patterns that hold, you know, that make thicker socks. So I plan to make more thicker socks these, this next month. So <coughs> that is it. Oh no, I, I skipped one. I skipped number 35, which was my Musselboro hat. I finished this on November 30th. This is by Isolde Teague. Um, and this knit up a lot faster than I expected it to. So it's just a big tube that you fold in and you can wear it either like this slouchy or you can um, fold it up. And this pattern is uh, very friendly for different needle sizes, different yarn gauge or weights, um, and different sizes from kids to adult. So it's a really good pattern. I wear this, uh, my hair's up, but I wear this almost every day as well. Because again, I work outside and I want to be seen. So <laughs> it doesn't look good with my hair up, but I wear this every day at work. Um, the yarn is Kellen Woolen's, uh, the perennial base, which I believe is wool and alpaca and nylon. I could be wrong. Um, this is the neon lime colorway. <clears throat> okay, my throat is killing me. That is a lot of talking. <laughs> a lot of talking. All right, so that is all of everything that I knit this year. Everything that I knit. Um that I finished. I take that back. Everything that I finished this year. So, um, I mentioned my make nine. So I made this at the beginning of the year. Um, let's see here out of the nine things that I put on here, I finished one, two, three, four. I finished four of them. I decided to take the yarn from the Laurel sweater and I put that into my Alpen glow instead. So this one was taken off and put into there. Um, the yarn for these socks, which were the alley socks, those ended up going into the bear paw socks because the alley socks were an all over color work sock. And I, when I started knitting it, it was way too tight. So I decided not to do it. And then I did start the half and half triangles wrap, but never finished it. And then, <coughs> um, these two just never got started because I just didn't get around to it. This is the Giselle Shawl by Cami Jo Knits. And this is the Wonderlust Wrap by Tiffany Lynn, which I do plan to still... I have yarn for both of those, so I do plan to knit those at some point. Um, the Laurel Sweater. Um, I don't think I will knit that anytime. That was a long time ago. Saw someone hold it up, thought it was beautiful, but... I don't think I need it for myself. So, plus I used the yarn that I had for it. So, <laughs> yep. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, that is pretty much it. I don't plan to have anything else finished before the end of this year. So, I don't. I'm not worried about that being done and added into this at any time. Uh, plans for next year. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make plans. I keep thinking of things that I want to knit next year, but I don't know if I want to make concrete plans. If I do decide to, I will make a separate video for that. 
but I am not sure if that's going to happen because anything can happen, right? I do, okay, the only like plan that I do have is to work through more of my stash. That's something that I should have, uh, let's see here. Stash, stash. <laughs> Then this one was not stashed. So let me see here. How much did I do? All right, 21 of these items, 21 out of 36 items were from stash. So that's pretty good. I do want to continue to work through my stash. I do have lots of um, kits um, and other yarn that are highlighted for projects. So I just want to keep knocking through and seeing what I, else I can get through. Um, and I'm going to, I'm also thinking that I need to start, <laughs> stop buying patterns and then taking my stash and using it for, straight for those. I have a crap ton of patterns. I need to start knitting some of those. <laughs> um, so that's another, I guess those are my two goals really. Picking p specific patterns to knit. Um, while I do have kits, so those are kind of technically specific patterns, everything else, um, I'm not going to make concrete plans on like which ones I'll pick to knit next year. I think I'm just going to uh, let it flow. We'll see. Um, and just keep working through this stash. Because I have a lot. I have a lot of stash. So thank you for putting up with me. Um, thank you for watching this video. Go ahead and like or subscribe. Do both if you want. Um, I highly, highly appreciate you stopping by. Go ahead and comment on anything you want. Again, everything should be listed in the description below. Um, again, keep your eye out on my Etsy, maybe. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, what else? What else do I want to say? I did a whip parade video, which should already be out. So if you're interested in seeing all the whips that I have still on the needles, go ahead and check that video out. Um, I do ha hope that you have a wonderful holiday season. And I hope 2023 brings you immense joy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.